like and subscribe for all the pain I have endured. You came at the right time. There is a mission I want to assign you. It's an appropriate difficulty for you, given that you recently became a blue whistle. First, head down to the second layer. You probably aren't used to cave raiding around that area yet, so be sure to prepare for it. If you can't complete this mission, your blue whistle may be revoked. Keep that in mind as you go cave raiding. Thanks for responding to the summons. A certain cave raider appointed you to survey an unexplored region. As to why you were the one who was chosen, well, just consider whether you want to accept it or not. To be exact on the details, an unexplored region was discovered near that area. The quest requires you to go to this unexplored region and research the primeval creatures there. You might be able to find previously unknown primeval creatures in unexplored areas. However, please make sure to stay vigilant. It's more important to survive and bring back information. The person who put up this quest wants to remain anonymous, so I can't say who it is. Now if you will please proceed with the survey. What would you like? See you soon. Welcome! How about this? Thank you. Welcome. Hey you, I need your help. I'd like to eat the type of food that only cave raiders eat and not the touristy kind. Do you know any special dish like that? That's too bad. I was hoping to be able to sample cooking that can only be found here. Ah, it's you. Take a look if you're interested in foreign goods.
You always look like you enjoy cave raiding a lot. Do you feel any different about it, even in this situation? I guess this dream cannot be stopped. You're also drawn to the charm of the Abyss. Though, I'm a bit different from you. Even though we're cave raiding, it still feels like a dream to me. I feel like I could wake up and find myself in bed. That's what I worry about. <laughs> Isn't it strange? Oh, is that? I was wondering who it was. You're that kid who got lost a while back. Oh, impressive. You're a blue whistle now? <laughs> Seeing how their junior is ahead of them, Nat and Shiggy must be panicking right about now. Speaking of, how's that other kid you got lost with? You know, the kid with the blonde hair? Hmm? What's wrong? I see. He left his whistle behind and went missing. I know it's painful, but it's best to accept it and move on. That's... That's how cave raiders endure. You haven't given up on the blonde kid? So, you believe that he's still alive? <sighs> right. That's all well and good. We're in the abyss. Anything can happen here. Those who don't know when to call it quits usually are the ones who survive in the abyss. Then again, those who don't know when to give up also end up losing their lives, too. In other words, it's all about balance. Don't ever forget, sometimes you need to be brave enough to run away. Let's meet again.
Let's run away. Are you okay? I'm glad I made it in time. That was way too close. It's been a while since we met, but I didn't expect your reaction. That's unfortunate. I thought you'd be overjoyed at our reunion. I'm sorry for making you worry about me. Hmm? You mean these bandages? Oh, it's nothing. I just happened to need them. Um, I have to apologize to you about that promise we made. Let's do our best to become White Whistles together! Got it? This is a promise between just the two of us. Thanks. This promise, it'll be something I'll never forget. I don't think I can keep it anymore. To be honest, I wanted to continue cave raiding with you. But I... I just don't have much time left. I will head to the bottom of the abyss, even if I have to break our promise. Please don't stop me. That would be too cruel. Are you going to tell me to go back? Back there? I used to just lie in bed and dream about cave raiding adventures in the abyss. I, I won't go back, even if it kills me. I'm a cave raider. No matter what happens up ahead, I will not regret it. If there's one thing that I regret, it's that I can't strive to become a white whistle with you anymore. I'm continuing down. If you keep striving to become a white whistle, we may meet again. That's the only thing I can look forward to. Goodbye. You're back. It seems that you have completed the mission. Hmm? What about Tiare? Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Tiare has impressive skills and abilities, but I didn't know it was to that level. If he has grown that much in such a short time, it could have something to do with a relic. I'll report to the proper authorities about this. This will be kept secret from the students of the orphanage. You have to keep quiet too. Tiare is still a red whistle. If he dove down to the second layer, that means it's considered a suicide. No more searches will be done for him. In addition to Rico and Reg, if people find out more cave raiders are considered to have committed suicide, everyone will panic. I want to avoid that. You understand, right? That being said, you're a blue whistle. If you want to continue searching for Tiare within your depth limit, that's fine. But make sure it doesn't negatively affect your regular cave rating. That is all from me. What are you so surprised about? Hmm? You're curious about what I'm doing here. After all, we mostly only meet in the Abyss. I guess it's the first time we've met up here. This is my home. It shouldn't be surprising to see me here. Someday, let's take time off cave raiding and enjoy a nice chat over a meal cooked by Laffy. White whistles are the equivalent to state secrets. That's why accurate information about white whistles is something even I don't know. Unless it's someone I've met or something I've personally seen, I know nothing more than rumors. When it comes to relics owned by white whistles, almost no information gets around. Normally, white whistles are only allowed to own up to grade one relics. 
You really think they follow that rule? There's no way to know what relics the White Whistles own and equip in secret. It's beyond imagining. That's how amazing those White Whistles really are. Well, I don't intend to remain a Black Whistle forever. Just between you and me, to become a White Whistle, you must descend to the fifth layer of the Abyss. But Black Whistles are allowed to go solo cave raiding only as far as the fourth layer. Do you know why? It means that to become a White Whistle, you either have to travel with a White Whistle or descend to the fifth layer without permission. Speaking of which, of those who do become White Whistles, most of them went cave raiding down there without permission. <laughs> It's you. I've received a quest to retrieve a relic. Interested? The request is from a cave raiding group who left a relic in the second layer of the abyss. They were attacked by primeval creatures and forced to abandon it. The relic to be retrieved has yet to be appraised, but it is estimated to be either grade two or grade three. We have info about the retrieval point from the cave raiding group. As for a reward, they will share the profits with you. Once you are ready, Head to the second layer.
That belongs to us. In this nation, just finding a relic isn't enough to claim ownership of it. After all, in the end, the final owner is the one who secures it. Leave this place quietly, or else we will take that relic by force! You brat! It's no use. We must give up on this relic. I see. Seems those cave raiders were from a foreign nation. It's true that, by law, the ownership of a relic is decided only when it ultimately reaches the surface. However, cave raiders belonging to the Cave Raider Guild in Orth don't think of it that way. There is an unspoken rule that whoever finds it first gets to keep it. That being said, depending on the relic's grade, it could escalate into a fight. Anyway, this completes the relic retrieval mission I assigned you. Here's your reward. Welcome! Perfect timing! Nat and Shiggy are also here! Hey! Did you come by because you needed something? We were out delivering mail and stopped by to see Uncle Habo. All right, everybody. Let's enjoy a cooked meal by Laffy and chat for a bit.
White Whistle Bondrood. That one is dangerous, a monster. In ten years, he made accomplishments that no one else had yet to achieve. He pioneered routes which were previously impenetrable. He secured a base and maintains it at the deepest possible location. Thanks to him, cave raiding technology went from stagnation to rapid progress. Speaking of which, remember when there were swarms of bugs that completely blocked passage downward? Bondrood was the one who exterminated them. From all that you've said, he sounds like he's a good person. What's so dangerous about him? His methods are unprecedented. He illegally sells relics and information about the depths to whoever he wishes. He discovered medicine through human experimentation and received a great deal of wealth for his efforts. He used his wealth to further his own research. When the swarming insects were discovered to originate from water, he dumped poison into the source. If animals or plants block his way of securing a new route, he creates massive fires. He doesn't care who is around him. He'll happily destroy entire environments. He will trample the pride and traditions of all cave raiders to usher in a new dawn. Hence why he is known as the Sovereign of Dawn. I can't believe how excited you sound about this. It's because he's a White Whistle enthusiast. He also did something truly vile overseas. He's a wanted fugitive for undisclosed crimes. Many have tried to capture him and collect his bounty. But they all end up going missing. Nowadays, everyone is too afraid and avoids going near him. In my time, I've encountered dangerous primeval creatures and completely insane cave raiders. But when I met Bondrood, the impression he left was very different. He was incomprehensible, like some creature wearing a mask and pretending to be human. If monsters do lurk in the netherworld, he is one of them. You want to know more about my mentor? Sure, I'll tell you. You might already know, but my mentor was the Sovereign of Annihilation, Liza, the Annihilator. Liza has already taken her last dive. We will never meet again, except at the bottom of the abyss. She... she was rather selfish. Liza would get violent whenever she got drunk. She was simply uncontrollable. Hmm? You want to know why I chose someone like that as my mentor? Well, she was overwhelming. Everything about her was overwhelming. She pierced my heart and ruthlessly stirred my desire for adventure. Though everything about her was unprecedented, she had a sort of honest strength that attracted other people. To tell the truth, there have been many times I've regretted my own choices. But still, I never once considered changing mentors. Jeez, she really gave me so much trouble. Hmm? It's nothing. I was just thinking about the past. My mentor Eliza once entrusted a child to me. That child was supposed to be allowed to choose any path she wished. She was to be allowed to find her very own adventure. I was to help her, watch over her, and guide her. I was entrusted to do that. But that child, from the very start, she chose to stick to a single path. In fact, she rejected all other paths before she had the chance to choose. She chose to pursue becoming a white whistle and reach the bottom of the abyss. One day, her mother... Rather, it was as if the abyss called to her, prompting her to depart. <laughs> yep, 
Yes, that's right. So you know of Rico. Did Nat and Shiggy tell you? She departed for the bottom of the abyss just before you arrived at the orphanage. I wonder where she is. And how she's faring. talking about me what do you mean i'm pretty sure you got hit earlier by some plants pollen Oh. 
Have any plans to return to Orth after this? If you do, there's something I want to ask of you. I want you to deliver this letter to Laffy for me. I don't think I'll get back to Orth anytime soon. Will you do it for me? That's great. I knew you'd accept it. <laughs>
welcome. What brings you here today? A letter from my hobo. Aw, thank you for delivering it all the way here. Let's have a look-see. What did he write to me? Laffy, how are you? I'm doing great. I found a grade one relic today. Isn't that amazing? I can sense that more treasures are hidden nearby, so I've decided to keep digging around in the third layer. I have an awful craving for your mustard stew, but it can't be helped. I want to become a white whistle as soon as I can and give you the good life. Please put up with me for a bit longer. Bye for now. From your future white whistle, Havel. Oh, Havo. He never quit writing childlike letters. Huh. Maybe I shouldn't have become a cave raider's wife. Anyway, let me cook you something nice to thank you for the letter. Don't be shy. Eat up. Laffy's cooking was delicious, though it had the taste of tears. to defeat such an opponent, and with that agility. That blue whistle is about the same age as me. I have to tell Master. Oh, you saw that. That blue whistle child is rather impressive. Really? I missed it. Those kinds appear only once in a while. Oh.
one. I'm glad you're safe. Oh, right. I was the one who threw the flashbang. No, no. Don't worry about it. Huh? Me? My name is Maruk. What's yours? All right. It's dangerous around these parts. Let's head to Seeker Camp. It should be safe there. But it might not be safe for me. I disobeyed Master's orders. Power. This must be the unmovable sovereign. Such was the child's first thought. Oh, so this tiny one is the rumored blue whistle. Yes, Master. Now then, what did I say earlier? Um, the blue whistle would be able to reach here without help. And to not intervene so you could assess their skill level. That's all. Oh. So you did remember. I thought you'd forgotten. I, I'm sorry. I saw it all happen and things looked bad. I had to. It's fine, Maruk. M master But you'll be disciplined later. Uh. By the way, Blue Whistle, Maruk really saved your life? You lack knowledge and skill, so I wish you wouldn't be so reckless. Do not give me unwanted work. Hmm. Well, if you'd whined or complained, I would have thrown you out. 
Having seen you close up, you don't look half bad. Master? Oh, that dirty whistle. It's a red whistle to boot. Why would you treat it like it's precious to you? I see. You're looking for your lost friend. So you're going to recklessly run around searching the abyss. Such an optimistic kid. You really think your friend still lives? You think just because there is no corpse, he must still be alive. That's where you're wrong. Dead cave raiders never have their corpses recovered. That's because they get devoured. All of them end up in the stomachs of primeval creatures and become manure for the abyss. If you continue to be so naive, your friends will be looking for you next. <laughs> and they will wear your whistle as a memento. Hey, Ozen, maybe that's enough of that, don't you think? I feel bad for the kid. You feel bad? I'm speaking out of the kindness of my heart. Well, your kindness is not the sort that other people can understand. Oh, fine. I'll leave it at that. By the way, Blue Whistle? She really means well when she talks like that. Don't let it get to you. Then again, you do seem to have much to work on. doing fine. I get punished all the time. It's not bothering me. This is my private room. Would you be so kind as to leave? 